Okay, it's Bob Green here, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So I've opened up the package uh, labelled date card from Lion uh, for the Lion 4 uh, experiment. And inside was one of these uh, sort of UK uh, money bags. And uh, that was also noted. And inside that was another package. And inside that was the data card, uh, fast data card provided by Looking for Heat and... Uh, uh, configured by uh, Martin there and what I did was I immediately copied that to a backup and I've uploaded it to the Google Drive and I'll give you a link in this video where you can download the raw data and just looking at what the data file has there appears to be um, two uh, calibrations uh, I think two calibrations or at least one is a calibration uh, and uh, uh, an actual data file from the run. And what they have is the date and time of a particular event, and they appear to be like almost one second apart. Uh, I think that's right. Uh, uh, this is uh, probably hours, minutes, seconds. Um, it has this volts. Now, I, I suspect this is out by a factor of two. I think um, this should be reading 11 or 12 volts. I think the power supply is 12 volts. So um, this probably would lead to maybe a misrepresentation of the watts, I don't know. Um, or maybe it really is those volts, uh, uh, time will tell. Uh, but you can have a look at the data, obviously. Um, it gives you, a, a, obviously there's an ambient uh, temperature thermocouple here, and then a thermocouple fr uh, from um, core A and core B. And uh, then we have current and uh, the calculator watts and the radiation uh, monitoring count. Now, uh, this is a, a open office so it's not very good with uh, large numbers of data uh, so those people who are better at processing this data uh, I encourage you to do so one thing I did notice is that there is a regular error um, with m monitoring the uh, thermocouple data I don't know why that is but there's uh, uh, many data points that are there so there probably be needing to be some uh, data processing where you remove alternate lines and then you remove lines that have errors um, and just go with the, the line data points that uh, uh, actually have a, a sample in them, a match sample. Okay, now uh, the second package uh, was the documents for Lion and I've had a brief look through those. I don't think there's anything uh, that, that can't be shared. Uh, uh, not that that would happen anyway, but uh, uh, first page was this, uh, which looks like it's... Um, a, some sort of a, a single uh, phase uh, power meter that it would appear that Lion purchased. And in fact, this is a, a detail of the actual experiment and, and other detail. Now, what happened was with the, with the, um, uh, the power delivery system, there was a, a, a variable resistor that rotated around, but he didn't have any markings on it. And uh, Lion has sent me a photo of what he did. He created a, a disk and, and put a sort of a one to eight or whatever it is or, uh, around the dial or one to 12 or something around the dial. And then he glued that in place so it could not move. So I'll share that. In fact, what I'll probably do is I'll scan this and make it into a PDF so you know exactly uh, uh, what I know uh, about the experiment and how things were done. But essentially, uh, he did a calibration run and he did a calibration run uh, with this in play and actually physically noting down uh, the data that came out. And he actually runs through that uh, calibration uh, process uh, here. And, and I, I guess that would line up with the data that you're seeing um, in the data files. Um, so typically, here's an entry point uh, in the calibration, uh, or, or the run, I think it's the calibration. And, and so he's saying at a particular time, the dial was set to a particular position on the fixed uh, 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 graphic that he had uh, attached. This was the power monitor that he purchased. Uh, so you should be able to match up this particular data with the, with the time in the... Um, uh, CSVs that are provided and, and, and showing that the PID uh, from the looking for heat system reached a particular temperature so this is the power in. Now he's measuring the I think the total power into the whole system and the interesting thing is that um, uh, I think he says that uh, somewhere that yeah it says here that the the power supply uh, that uh, attached to the looking for heat, sorry, the power supply with no looking for heat block, i.e. this 
uh, the actual reactor and stuff wasn't attached to it, uh, without it being connected, it, it drew 10.1 watts uh, with the AC monitor. Uh, uh, when I say AC monitor, I mean uh, this monitor here from RS Components. Uh, and uh, that fell to 8.5 watts uh, when it was switched on. Um, and this, uh, he concludes, is possibly due to the PSU cooling fan. Now, uh, when you get into the actual experiment, he has some extra detail here. So I think the first thing is if people can look to clean up the data and uh, produce some graphs, uh, that would be very helpful. Um, after I've uh, uh, done the school run, I will uh, attempt to scan this uh, and uh, get that out to you uh, so that you know um, the, the whole sort of uh, process of uh, the experiment. Uh, he does say that uh, he started the uh, cycling, the, the power cycling, um, and uh, he believes that he made a mistake. Uh, when, when, when he started, uh, he had the initial point at, set to 7.7, .7, he dialed it down to 6, and then uh, he went straight back to 7.7, .7 and uh, he believes that was a serious error because the funky business happened after that. Anyway, you'll be able to see uh, what is written there and uh, um, we can compare that with the data and compare all the, uh, uh, if there's any radiation uh, monitoring or any other stuff, uh, it will be in the data. So thank you um, and uh, really appreciate people's help with graphing this.